tonight is all about just talking and chatting. Um, there's going to be some things that we agree on, some things that we don't, but that's, that's wonderful. That's what we are in the United States, right? We can talk freely, we can talk to each other and with each other, and we cannot agree. As I tell our four kids, I don't want us to agree on everything. Because that's like talking to myself, and I do enough of that. <laughs> right? You need different opinions and different views and different whys. So I have wonderful staff that provided us with the food tonight. I'm very grateful for them. <clears throat> you saw them coming in. Sherry is the, the tiny lady. She runs the front. We call her Mother Sherry because she, she drives us, doesn't she? Miss Dully is familiar with that. Um, this is Miss Jennifer. Jennifer is our case manager. She connects the doctors and the care plans with insurances and all that kind of stuff. So she's our middle one. And then this is Tracy. Tracy Hi. runs this back room, which is our rehab room. Steve doesn't. He memorizes it all. I know. We don't go there, <laughs> You all set then, ladies? Yeah. Ready to roll? Okay. All right, I want to keep this to an hour, I think. Huh? Yeah. I know. Today wasn't it an hour? Yeah. This, this, is, a, this could be interactive. So. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> We're gonna have some fun. It'll be fun. We're gonna have fun. So I'm gonna slide around a lot because I don't like to hear myself or see myself. Let's see you there. So we want to talk about healthcare myths. In other words, what are some things that we hear a lot of? What have we been told by our parents? And there's so many things that come to your mind, right? like gum in your stomach, or there has to be amount of time before you can go swimming, right? Um, different things like that. So that's where we came up with this. And the only thing I did, I Googled every healthcare myth there was, and then I ordered seven books. So for the last six weeks, I've just read books on these healthcare myths. And the interesting part is that some of them are still highly debatable, which kind of makes me chuckle. So here we go. Supplements make you healthy. And I'll read these out loud to you. Supplements make you healthy. Is that true? It helps. It helps. It helps if you're deficient, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what we do here is we do lab work to find out where you're deficient, and then you supplement accordingly. What we find in healthcare is that too many times people take random supplements and not know whether they need it or not. So then we have, in essence, high price urine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So supplements are good. Not all supplements are the same. You want to get a plant-based supplement if you can. And we have a lot of recommendations on things to get or things not to get. Fair enough? Cold weather makes you sick. No. Not a chance. I spent uh, two weeks in Alaska and their warm weather was what we have like tomorrow. Yeah, so Alaska was very interesting. So cold weather has nothing to do with it. We use 10% of our brain. What do you think? That's true. That's about the truth. Not bad. Not bad. You gotta have a brain. <laughs> I'm waiting because I see the twinkle in some of these ladies' eyes. Like, well, my husband's less than 10%. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, 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 don't say it. I know Barbara's over there like, oh, well, me. <laughs> no, what we see is that we look at MRIs and then we stimulate people and look at their brain scans. And what we found is that we do use all of our brains. It's just different things stimulate different parts. So we do use all, all of it. Sugar makes us hyper. Yes. All day long. You want to know the difference? If you got grandkids, give them sugar. If you have kids, give them sugar. Let them have some of those cupcakes. Wind them up and let them go. <laughs> There's something else about sugar. I don't know if this is the time. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and mention it. How many people are familiar with cancer and PET scans? Exactly. PET scans is where they take saline solution, they add a radioactive nucleotide, so picture like tiny marbles that are radioactive, and then they put sugar in it. 
because they know that when they put that intravenously, sugar goes to the cancer site. And then when they scan your body, all those radioactive dots, they show up at the cancer site. So in essence, the test itself confirms that sugar feeds cancer. So if you or anyone you know has cancer or has dealt with cancer, first thing you do is stop feeding it, right? You don't feed it so it won't grow. It's like kids, stop feeding them, they'll grow. Is that true for every cancer? Um, not every cancer, but that a PET scan is what we usually start with. And we're talking about mid to high 90 percentile. Fair enough? Okay. Rarely do, you, do we say all. It's not all, but it's a very high percentage. Very high. Okay, so, I, have another, sorry, I have another question. Are you talking about just sugar or natural sugar too, like in fruit? Good example. <coughs> thank you. Good point. So when we think of natural sugar, like some fruits, right? Natural sugar does not feed cancer. It does promote inflammation. Inflammation is the cause for heart disease, not cholesterol. Inflammation. Inflammation causes heart disease. So if you're going to eat fruits, try to eat them in the morning, like berries, that kind of stuff, in the morning or at lunchtime. By 3 o'clock in the afternoon, cut the berries out of your diet. Fair enough? Now if it's a processed sugar, breads, when you eat a bread, it breaks down the saliva in your mouth and it turns to a glucose, a sugar. So if I had, sh if I had cancer, I'm cutting out all breads and I'm calling cutting out all processed sugar. Stop feeding it. If you stop feeding cancer, it can't grow. If it can't grow, you bought time, right? Does cancer not ramp up over time? Yes. You can't cure something that ramps up over time. You can only reverse it. All right? Be good. I am. What about honey? Natural honey. Natural sugar. Okay. Right? Natural sugar. So it's not as bad for us. No. Not nearly. Your body processes it differently. Okay. Exactly. Yes, sir. Uh, concussions. We must stay awake. I work with the uh, USA Olympics, bobsledders. <laughs> you think they get concussed? Uh, yeah. Well, no, I never understood why the hell you would get on a little piece of metal on your belly and scream down a tube. <laughs> Makes no sense to me, but they do it, and they call it a sport. I call it insane. <laughs> I mean, that makes no sense to do 60, 70 miles an hour head first. Right? The answer to this is negative. If someone doesn't know who or what year it is, who the president is, if they're concussed, we usually grade it one through five, that would be a grade two or worse, we take them to the hospital. If they're vomiting, take them to the hospital. Fair enough? But if you get wrapped on the head and you still have your whereabouts, you can still talk, you know where you are, those types of things, it's safe. Gum stays in your stomach for seven years. Any takers? No. no. I heard of that one when I was a kid. Yeah. I just laugh because I, I can hear my grandparents rattling in my head. But Tim, you know, reading in the dark is bad for your eyes. Well, that's hard to no. say. It's what happened to That would determine whether you can read, right? <laughs> Does that mean you have to understand it, right? Oh, exactly. The answer is no. No. Water consumption of eight glasses per day. No. Yeah, so it's much. good for you. It's a good start. Is it a rule of thumb? No. What we teach now is half of your body weight in ounces per day. It doesn't make sense that you're going to need as much water as I do. Right? I'm, I'm twice your weight. Yeah. So it's half your body some. weight in ounces per day. <laughs> what was that? I said and then some. <laughs> yes, probably. Half your body weight in ounces per day. Okay? So there's 128 ounces in a gallon. 64 and a half gallon. 
So you do the math on where you're at. Now, what about if you drink a bunch of caffeine? No, it's a diuretic. It's a diuretic, so diuretic. wouldn't you have to up your water? Yeah. Yes. So the first thing you do in the morning when you get out of bed, Steve, the red coaster. The red, yes, that one. <coughs> yes, grab it. So my kids and my grandkids laugh at me because I've got about four of these. Because this, this is what I drink all day. I get out of bed, I fill this up with filtered water like we have in a lobby, and by the time I leave the house, I drink the whole thing. That's 22 ounces. Because if I get up at 6.30, say I drink this at 7, when was the last time that I had water? Well, I went to bed at 10, and I try not to drink water within an hour of going to bed, or else you get up all night. So that's 9, so it's been 10 hours since your body's had water. Your body's thirsty. Fair enough? So when you get up in the morning, get a nice big tall of glass of water and just stand there until you're full. They drink their coffee first. But most people get up and they drink their coffee first. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. Drink as much water as you can because the coffee's going to be a diuretic. If you haven't had water in 10 hours, you're already dehydrated. And then when you drink coffee on top of it, okay, no, now we're just making it worse. What about decaf? Uh-huh. That's just a big curveball. Have you had water in the last 10 hours? I don't drink water. Mm, that's a problem. Mm, has it hasn't been. <laughs> 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 right? When I drink, when I drink, if I would drink that much, I wouldn't be able to live and get back there constantly. Initially, yes. No, always. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, but once your body starts adapting and it starts processing and using that, that water, it uh, settles down quickly. Meaning two weeks, three, three, three weeks. Mm. This is one of my favorites. It made me laugh. Swimming one hour after eating. You're a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice time to call on you, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, this was one that I was hit with all the time growing up. Yeah. I grew up around Detroit, so there's water all around. And you know, Detroit, we only got good good weather for three months. The rest is like a mess. And Detroit has good water. <laughs> Detroit does have good water if you're in the lakes. Oh yeah, not in Detroit. Yeah. So the answer is no. Swimming one hour after no, it's all fallacy. That was meant so that mom and dad could take a breather after they ate, <laughs> and then the kids were. Yeah. You know how long it's been around? That myth. Oh, decades. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's funny because some of these have been around. There was one I read for like hundreds and hundreds of years. Makes you chuckle. Fingernails and hair growth after death. Nope. That's true. Yes. Sorry. No. No. no, your body is dehydrated after death. All the water is drained, so therefore things retract. Things retract. If you drink a lot of water, do your fingernails grow faster? As long as your body has the proper nutrients to do so, that would be reasonable. Fingernails has a lot to do with magnesium. So sometimes you look at fingernails, and if you look at it from the side, they get wavy or pitted. Yeah. Magnesium's low. Yeah, that's why I think it. Brittle nails too. I like split brittle nails. Is that magnesium? Yes. Yep. Bump up your magnesium for a while, and then you start to look at your nails, and it's like, well, I'll be darned. There we go. What happens? Is is there such a thing as overdosing, or does your body get rid of the excess? Good question. So when we're looking at vitamins and minerals, A, D, E, and K, those are oil soluble, meaning you can get too much of it. Your body will store it and build up. The rest is water soluble. If you get too much, you're going to urinate them out. And that's why so many times supplements become high price urines. But now I'm on massive doses of vitamin D because I, I have to take Berea, so. Right. What so happens then? Well, I would recommend that regular, whether it's quarterly or every six months, you got to get blood work to right. see where your D levels are. Right. Mm -hmm. So in the last t two years, well, what we've noticed is that normal vitamin D levels are 30 to 100. What we found is that patients less than 50 are more susceptible to a virus. Mm -hmm. Patients 65 and above rarely ever get the virus if they do minimal impact. Interesting. 
So even when we've got different things that go on around, around us, you can still learn something from it. We all know this one. Turkey consumption makes you drowsy. Oh, it's got to be true. It's not making <laughs> yeah. 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 Only for the cook. <laughs> for the people who ate it. Hey. Good point. So one thing that I started doing in my family, we have four kids. They're ages 23 to 37, seven grandkids, is that in my world growing up, my mom would do all the cooking and then my wife would do all the cooking. And then, you know, us guys would sit around and watch the Detroit Lions lose every year on Thanksgiving. They, they still do. They've kept that trend. Consistent. Exactly. And then when the dinner was done, everybody would sit there and then the ladies would clean up. And that didn't resonate with me. So what I started in when Thanksgiving was at my house is that if the ladies prepped the food, which we all wanted that, <laughs> we wanted them to prep the food. Then after dinner, they were to sit down and the guys were responsible for cleanup. So they fall asleep? So the guys clean up now. So whether it's Easter dinner, which will be this Sunday, or Thanksgiving dinner, if the ladies make the food, then the guys clean up the mess. Well, did the ladies go to sleep? If that's what they choose. <laughs> if that's what, what they the, choose. Well, they ate turkey, so. <laughs> okay, folks, here's one. Ulcers are, are from spicy food. What do you think? False. Yes. False. 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 Yes. That's a false one. Because that would mean that something got caught in your stomach and stayed there at the time. And the stomach is, is really quick to, to get things in and out. The next one is women can get pregnant during menstruation. Yes. Yes, it's yes, true. <laughs> yes, it's true. Body heat loss is primarily from your head. I always thought that it was because if I put a hat on my head in the winter I feel a whole lot better the answer is no your body will expel heat um, um, across your body at the same way really mm -hmm. but keep in mind though that you know your heart is located high in your chest um, its main goal is yes to pump blood throughout the body but it's to keep that brain going. So it can lose, you know, you can turn it off an extremity, but its primary goal is to keep keep that brain full of uh, fresh blood. So in that respect, it's gonna have uh, a higher density of blood flow. Wet hair in the cold makes you sick. No. Oh, come on, I really thought somebody was gonna fall for that one. My mom was always doing it. I said, no. Yes, yes. Being from Detroit, I can remember walking to school every day. And it was flat, so there wasn't uphill both directions. But anyhow, <laughs> walking to school every day, and my hair was wet and it would freeze by the time that I got there. Here's one that's interesting. With this one, death rates increase over the holidays from suicide. Now, when I read that in the textbooks, the textbooks were like, no. The rates are equal. So then I kind of went one step further and I got a hold of some health, mental health professionals and I started asking them some questions. And they're like, no, we see it. It's higher during the holidays. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those that's kind of split. Textbooks are telling me, no, no big deal. But the boots on the ground, as I refer to, the people in the field are saying, no, this happens more on a regular basis. <coughs> Interesting, right? That's another one. <laughs> Poinsettias are toxic. Yes. Cats. Dogs. And Not cats. Dogs. I don't know about animals, but to people know. And honestly, that was one that I had no 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 clue on. Like, what are you talking about? Paul or are you talking about eating? Um, everything that I read didn't specify one way or the other. Um, they were more concerned with the consumption. So I was assuming eating, ingesting it somehow. Chicken noodle soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the chicken broth. Here's a good one, though. This word here. Cures. No. no. It doesn't cure. No. What cures? Rest. This is going to be a good one. Um, what cures? Uh, don't 
I know. I'm waiting for this one. Your body. Rinse. Yes. What? Your body. So you rest it. I'm sorry? I said rest. Rest allows the body to <coughs> heal. Right? So your body is three things. Self-regulating, self-functioning, and self-healing. Right? So, what we so what's the difference between <laughs> you and you? To connect the brain to the body. <coughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> so one of my lectures was, because I always had some folks saying, well, medications cure or vaccines cure. And I said, okay, let's take one of my famous bottles. Let's go down to the pharmacy and fill it up with every drug and every vaccine. Sense those things cure. And then let's go down to the morgue and do some healing. And we all chuckle, right? So your body needs very little to function and to heal. The problem is, is that you get in the way. And you get in the way by the chronic things that you do. Like eating sugar all the time, right? Or working in, for instance, we're starting to see things now that we never, in the past, um, on the back of people's heads, where all the muscle attachment comes up, we're starting to see little horns, like a bone spur, if you will, because everybody's doing this. Yeah. So for every one inch that your head comes forward, the weight, the nine pounds of your head doubles, and they're like this all the time, or they're at a computer all the time, or they're driving. Let's back to the back too, right? Yes. Because now that affects the spine, right? <coughs> Interesting. Nighttime eating makes you fat. Yeah. yeah. This could be a fun one. Well, no. Depends on what you eat. <laughs> yes, exactly. What she said? That's right. She said it depends on what you eat. Well, that's true, yeah. Right? Yes. If it's 11 o'clock at night and you kind of like, you were busy working and the kids and life, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh crap, I'm like really hungry. But it's 11 o'clock, right? I've never seen someone become sick and diseased or put on fat because they eat too much broccoli at 11 o'clock at night. So you're exactly right. It depends on what you're eating, right? Who did you see that ate broccoli at night? Barry. <laughs> it's usually popcorn, <laughs> 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 ice cream. <laughs> so, for instance, I work with the world's strongmen, and they're six foot something and almost 500 pounds. And they consume 12,000 calories a day. <clears throat> so, that's a lot of broccoli. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit, what a salad. <laughs> So what they find, if you're going to eat quality, clean food, I don't think any of you could eat 3,000 calories a day. Because to eat good, clean food, 3,000 calories a day, you would get so sick and tired of eating. That sounds impossible to me. <laughs> I don't know Much the same way, <laughs> when I work with people that want to lose weight, if they need to lose 50 or 100 pounds, I have them eat more. They eat more, but they eat good stuff. So with the World Strongmen, what they have to do is in between meals, they have to drink protein shakes. And they'll even have to get up in the middle of the night to eat in order to get that many calories in it. It's a very unhealthy yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, because they're getting rest. Yes. Um, the one guy in fr that I, I remember working with he went on to play a role in the Game of Thrones. If any of you have has seen that series, mm -hmm. he uh, he played uh, the mountain. Oh, okay. okay. So he's six foot nine, wow. and he weighs about four fifty, four sixty. So he is literally a mountain of a man. Um, funny though, my goodness, are they funny? Um, full moon increases ER psychiatric visits. 20 years of experience. Oh, yes. Prime example where the textbooks that I kept reading said no. Someone that's got boots on the ground said 20 years of experience, yes. 
What I've learned at thir after 30 years in practice is that that experience that I initially talked to you about, that means more than going to school. When you, when you spend something and you do 30 years of it, you kind of know it inside out. You've kind of seen it all. So. Okay, can you explain why the full moon increases? It has to do with the gravitational pull of the earth. I don't know. But it happens, believe me. You don't know why, but it's definitely there. Oh, yeah, it's there. <laughs> it just don't make sense. I don't understand that. Have to look up it is. Yep, yeah, we see it though. Wow. <clears throat> Anyone familiar with probiotics? We're familiar with an antibiotic. Are you familiar with a probiotic? So your your gut has about five trillion um, bacteria in it, and that bacteria is what breaks down food so that your body can use it. And when you take a probiotic, you're putting more bacteria good bacteria into your gut so that it can process the foods. Now, we do know that there's a direct correlation between your gut health and your immune response. Direct correlation one-to-one. -one. You can't have a failing GI tract and not have immune response issues. So, probiotics do not prevent colds, but if you're taking a, a strong probiotic with vitamin D, and zinc, if you do get a cold, it'll be mild. Yeah. Fair enough? And that's going to bring me up to another one soon. Can't get ahead of myself. Baby's fever with teething. Yes. No. No? No. Babies do not fever with teething. Teething is a natural response. They do not fever. When the body fevers, what the body's doing is cranking up its internal temperature to kill something off. Well, if you're teething, the only thing you could kill off is either bacterial or viral, right? But if you're teething, you have neither. So no, you do not. Pregnancy lasts nine months. No. <laughs> this one, I, I no. had to laugh, right? What's that? Plus or minus. Okay. So I have four kids and seven grandkids, and I had to think about it, right? Okay, how long is uh, the gestational period of humans? How many weeks? 40. 40 weeks. 40 weeks. How many weeks are in a month? <laughs> four weeks in a month. So if the normal pregnancy range is 40 weeks, divided by... Yeah. It's ten months. Who came up with nine? If right? Who came up with nine? Unless you're doing choy math. That's kind of an average. <laughs> right. Right. I thought it was interesting. Okay, this gets into the controversial stuff. Vaccines, are they associated with autism? No. no. At one time they were taught to. Okay. But why do we have so much of it now these days? That's, that's right. where my mind goes. Because yeah. it's recognized. It wasn't recognized before. It was. And yeah. You're there to put away. Yeah. So this is what I did. <clears throat> I looked in the history books, mm -hmm. and I went back, and I graduated high school in 83, so I'm 57 years old. In 83, a typical vaccine cycle was eight vaccines from the time you were born until you're 18 years old. Eight. Right? At the end of the 90s, the scientists recognized that the periodic table of elements was not infinite, meaning it was finite. It was not expanding. There was a specific table of elements, and that's it. And that they've come up with all the drug combinations that they knew of. So the next great frontier was vaccines. So in 1986, President Ronald Reagan signed the National Vaccine Act, which took away responsibility from the vaccine manufacturers and created a whole other court system called the Vaccine Court, which to date has distributed over $4.3 billion in vaccine injury. 
So then I graft. So if a, if, if, if a newborn is born today, what's the vaccine schedule by the time they're 18? 72, and it's growing. In the last two years, they want to bump it up more. Okay, so it went, in my child, and again, whether you agree or disagree, I simply look at the facts, put the facts on the wall, and then we'll talk, right? So, 1983, we had eight. Today, we have 10 times that. Okay? And those are all mandatory? Yes, that's the vaccine schedule. So, you put that out there. They're not liable. So now, us taxpayers are on the hook for the 4.3 billion. The last thing that I looked at is I graphed all of these cerebellar degenerative diseases in the mid 80s alzheimer's parkinson's dementia autism and i charted and i graphed the rates per hundred thousand and i came up with a number and then i ran that graph from 1980 to 2020 and see how they fluctuate and they're all parallel so in the last 40 years, they've paralleled. And I'm going to leave it right there for you. Why have they, why? And that's what we need to, that's what we need to discuss. But first and foremost, we need, we need transparency. Why did we need eight in 1983? And within one person's lifetime, we have to do 10 times that. Maybe it's because they put all the processed stuff and all the food now and that's part of it healthier. yes meaning toxins right? right toxins so toxins are going to come in the form of food but then we also need to look at this as well well how are we going to get transparency when we couldn't even get it for for covid vaccine amen sister mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm did you get the covid shot hmm? did you get the covid shot i have not had an injection since I was probably 14. So I've never had anything. I have four kids that are 23 to 37 and they've, none of them have ever been vaccinated. I have seven grandkids, six years old and younger, they've never been vaccinated. Because when I looked at this data 37 years ago, I didn't like what I saw. That was my choice. What do you do if the, if the schools and stuff say, you have to have these or you can't well, da, da 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 What's interesting is that I've had my kids in Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee, and Georgia okay. throughout their lives. Mm -hmm. Different states have different laws. I never had an issue with it until I was in Michigan. I was the vice president on the school board. And the school nurse didn't know who I was. And her and I got into a bit of an exchange. And then I started putting document after document in front of her. And I said, you don't realize it is a person's choice. It's your choice what you do with your body. And I firmly believe that. Uh, yeah. Your body, your choice. Until our choices start to affect another human being. Fair enough? So once I started laying things in front of her, she said, that's not accurate. And I said, you need to call your superior. Called him up, put her on speakerphone. He's like, no. He's right. And then I let the cat out of the bag that I'm a doctor and I'm the vice president of the school board. So <clears throat> when it comes to vaccines, these are things we need to look at. I read the documentation today on Pfizer. Pfizer did the majority of the COVID vaccines. They knew, based on their data that they released, oh, mind you, that data they tried to suppress for 75 years. They knew, based on the trials that they did, the rate of death that was going to occur. They knew it was from pericarditis. They knew it was from inflammation. And they knew it caused clots. That's from the documentations that I read from Pfizer this morning. So, I like to think that we're still in America. We still have choice. We still have freedoms. So that was the best that got the shots, didn't 
they're having they're having vascular challenges. We've been seeing that in a clinical basis. The cardiologists around town I keep in touch with, a lot of them are concerned, as well as the, the neurologists, because of what they're saying. So again, it's a concern. I have factor five, and I signed a sheet that yes, I, I take a blood thinner. I already have a problem with blood clots, but they didn't tell me she take it. My uh, professional opinion is that uh, your body, your choice, you make an educated decision. But, but you have to have the information to make yes. a decision, and I didn't have that when I was yes. vaccinated. Yes. I agreed. So that was the landmine of the evening. Ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine does not help with viruses. Hands down it does. Hands down it does. Um, if we can get zinc, vitamin D, if we can get those up in your body, the chances of you getting a virus is slim. If you do get the virus, it has minimal effects. The other thing that I read is that anyone under 65 years old, the chances of it being a real issue is slim. If you're over 65, the only thing that matters is if you have three or more comorbidities, such as uh, diabetes, obesity, those were the big two, hypertension. But again, those people are at risk for a lot of things because of those co co comorbidities. So again, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be divisive. If anything, I am a uniting person. Um, we are all Tennesseans, we're all Americans, and um, aside from my family, you all are my family. My patients are my family. It's my job to read the information, to break it down, and then present the facts to you so that you make the decisions. That's how I run my, my office. You make the decisions. My job is to inform you. Last one, vaccine present diseases. Is that, we all kind of know vaccines don't prevent diseases, right? right? Well then why did we get the COVID shot to try to prevent it? <laughs> uh, Pfizer in that document did say that uh, it, it was their opinion that natural immunity, and the natural immunity has the same or better response as uh, the test subjects with the vaccine. Why weren't you told that, right? Why weren't you told that? Why weren't you told that if your zinc levels and vitamin D levels were at this certain point, that again, it was better than the vaccine? All this information you needed to know. But can you, can you argue that uh, smallpox, polio, and some of those other type things were not controlled they, with vaccines? Um, so for me, sir, I just look at facts. You know, facts don't have feelings. Sure. So I, I make sure that everything I look at doesn't have feelings. When you look at the polio vaccine, it came out in 51. Coming into that outbreak, they knew what was going on. Um, polio was only classified as one category. When it came out of the vaccine, meaning three months later, there was 12 categories that they broke it down to, such as bacterial meningitis, viral meningitis, a lot of the things that you and I know are separated. They didn't separate them until after it. So again, it's the whole manipulation of information. Is polio an issue? Yes. Um, smallpox, again, that goes back to cleanliness. But things like mumps and measles, I can remember when my children were little, we used to have parties, get all the kids together. Yeah. They all get it. They got over it. Okay, and now we go back to doing our regular thing. <laughs> So, for me, it's all about transparency of information. And um, I have an issue when something is withheld because then you're manipulating people and I, I have a real issue with that. I only want the facts to get to you. So, um, the next one, no, this one. This bottom one is where we'll get dive into something a little bit deeper. Uh, chiropractic, as you all know, I'm a chiropractor. Chiropractic is a belief system. No. I believe in chiropractic. I sure do. I do. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> okay, so th this is fairly simple. Um, think of me driving down the road and I get in a car wreck. And I'm paralyzed from the chest down. Meaning I had spinal cord damage from the chest down. Right? Do you believe that? 
or do you know it? Well, I know it because I can't move my legs, right? What you've lost, you've lost 100% control of your nerves from your chest down, right? What about if you lost 50% of your nerves? <clears throat> what does that look like? It looks like chronic, chronic pain, chronic symptoms, right? Do you believe that or is that just fundamental anatomy? It's fundamental anatomy, right? Meaning if you cut a nerve, wherever that nerve is going, that tissue doesn't work. Right. Okay. So some of the nerves that come out of your spine go to your spleen and your pancreas and your liver and your small intestine, right? So if you cut those nerves, those organs don't work. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So chiropractic, the principle of chiropractic is that your brain controls your body. It controls every cell in your body. And we know that to be true. And when things get out of alignment, they put pressure on the nerve, thereby, thereby the nerve flow becomes decreased. In other words, it's not at 100%, depending on how bad the nerve is pinched, it drops. My job is to take the pressure off the nervous system, allowing the body to communicate, regulate, and heal the way that it's designed to. It's not a belief system. It's basic bloody anatomy. So when I, when I do get into some uh, discussions with fellow healthcare providers, I tell them, we didn't learn this in med school. This was sophomore year anatomy and physiology, right? This is fundamental building blocks of how the body functions. Basic stuff. Lose weight by exercising, not dieting. No. 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 <laughs> That'd be a combination. Yeah, I think a combination. Watching what you eat, moving your body. I'm just smiling because I love it. I love the thoughts. Mm -hmm. I love I love the input. Mm -hmm. Dr. Cindy, uh, my wife, her famous saying around the office has always been, you cannot exercise away a bad diet. Right. That's right. That's right. true. true. Right. right? Because your labs are still going to be in the toilet. <laughs> yes. Right? right? You may look good, but on the inside, you're junk. Hence, bodybuilding. They look good on the outside, but the inside, their labs are just a hot mess. Right? If it's January 1st, it's called a New Year's resolution. resolution. You know what it needs to be called? A New Year's revolution. Because if it's a resolution, you're going to come back next year and do the same damn thing. <laughs> what are you doing? Right? Let's just do it once. Let's fix it. And then... So, if it's January 1st and we're going to have a revolution, the first thing that I'm going to work with you for eight weeks is going to be get your kitchen straight. Yeah. Learn how to cook. Learn how to cook good food. Learn how to cook food that feeds you and doesn't make you sick, right? When you go to the grocery store, stay to the outside. Kind of like in NASCAR, stay to the outside. Because everything in the inside of the grocery store is processed, right? And that's not where you're going to get health from. Walk into the vegetable department, do a 360, and I want you to eat everything in there at least once a month. How many colors are peppers? Oh, four or five. Four or four. I'm thinking yellow, green, red. Is there orange, anything else? Orange. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. So eat one of each once a month. What's the difference? Hell, I don't know, but since I got so many colors, you got to eat one of each. <laughs> eat one of everything in there once a month. And then we'll go back and start eating the important stuff more often. Then you go to the back. Now you get into the meat section. Organic, clean, chicken, beef, fish. Rest-fed beef. That's across the back. And then you get over to the, the milk cheese section. Same way. Organic, grass-fed, clean. Stick to the back. The stuff in the middle is what's going to get you. Good stuff. <laughs> Exercising helps. But the point of kitchen first 
is that we found that within four to six weeks, we can get your, your labs, your blood chemistries, we can get them in really good shape in four to six weeks. That tells me that your inside of your body is working right. And then it also tells me that that extra shell that you have around that you want to get rid of, over time we will get rid of that if we have our labs right. Make sense? And then that's when you add your exercise to speed up the process of burning it off. I have a question. Please. You said to stay away in the middle of the aisles, but there's tuna fish there, there's salmon, there's crab, there's canned chicken. It's only got salt and water in it. Really? I don't know. That's what the can says. <laughs> I like to stick to the back where I get a slab of fish, right? And then I need to take it home and cook it. I'm not real sure about things in cans. What about frozen fish? Frozen fish. Can be. Can be. It's best fresh. Right. And that's why I say the back. Right. I'm not saying er 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 everything is bad in the middle. If it comes in cans, though, I'd, I'd kind of like to steer away from it. Yeah, they probably put a little mercury in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. the flavoring. Yeah, okay. Well, damn, they don't say anything on the can. It's just water and salt and fish. It's much the same way with vaccines. When I look at the adjuvants and when I look at the preservatives, I can't get past that to worry about whether it's effective or not. It's a it's a process that you run that you run your brain through. Okay, I mean I hate to interrupt, but you're no, you're saying in the meat department. Say if you buy a whole chicken or turkey, you know, and you hear all this stuff, they're processed, processed, yeah. processed. So it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. We like to buy local from local farmers. Okay. That that that's where we get our our meats from. Um, that would be your first choice. And it just made me think of something. You and I haven't talked about it. Our beloved FDA. So if something has three letters, I don't like it, <laughs> right? FDA, CIA, FBI, IRS, DMV. INS, DMV. insurance, DMV. DMV. If it's three letters, I'm already, I'm choking her, you know? So our beloved FDA just passed, due to our current uh, resident, that in two years, we are not going to be allowed to have beef. Yes, it's going to have to be this processed meat oh, pink slime. That's going to cause the revolution right there. That is what the FDA passed based on our current administration. I couldn't believe it. My wife was starting to lose lose her marbles. She's like, they can't do that. That's that's. And we're driving around, so now I notice every cow in the field, you know, <laughs> thinking, what's going to happen? But yeah, they passed that legislation two years time. They'll pass it in the dark today. And then in six years, they'll say, it's been on the books for six years. You haven't had a problem with it. Some meat packers in the soup. Yeah. The next one, germ theory versus terrain theory. Does anybody understand that one? That was a personal one. Terrain is land. Environment. Environment. Right? Terrain. Our current health care system is based off the germ theory. Yes. Because I can scare the shit out of you with a germ. Right? Hence the last two years. Let me explain what I mean. So, uh, Louis Pasteur developed the germ theory. The germ theory states that if this is a bacteria or virus, and it's a bad one, and I toss it to you, or I get it to you, that you're going to get sick. We've dealt with that the last two years. Right? Everybody's walking around scared half out of our mind. That's germ theory. Along the same time, meaning the mid-1860s, he had a counterpart by the name of Antoine Beauchamp. Beauchamp felt that it was a terrain theory. That was what healthcare was. Meaning that if this young man wasn't eating well, wasn't sleeping well, worked too many hours, his immune system would, would drop, meaning his terrain would become susceptible to something that he come in contact with. 
that's a train thing. Right? Easy way to prove it. If the germ theory were in fact accurate, would we have doctors? No, because there's so many things out there that are really bad stuff. Anthrax. Seems to me that if you had one person come in contact with anthrax, here we go. Right? So germ theory versus terrain theory. And I have that book on my desk at home. Our current healthcare system is based on germ theory. If this is a germ, you got it. <laughs> terrain theory states that if I keep my vitamin D levels up, my zinc levels up, if I get enough rest, if I drink enough water, if I stay away from sugar and processed foods, then my immune system will be high enough, meaning my terrain would be functioning high enough that when I came in contact with things, my body could handle it. So if you're healthy enough and say, she got the flu, but if I'm healthy or not, I'm not going to get the flu, right? If your immune system is functioning at a high enough level, yeah, you can come in contact with it. Wow. How do you know when your immune system is where it's supposed to be? Good response. There's many ways to test that. One is the blood, blood work, mm -hmm. to find out whether your zinc, your magnesium, your D levels, Again, we just found out in the last two years, if your vitamin D is above 65, you're, you're in pretty good shape. Comorbidities are another big thing. In other words, if your body is already struggling, if it's fighting diabetes, if it's fighting obesity, hypertension, your immune system is going to be lower. So it all comes back to your immune response. The one thing that we did understand back in that time, the 1860s, is if you wash and clean and prepare, the chances of a lot of these diseases drop dramatically. Meaning sanitation. Food prep and sanitation mm -hmm. took us light years. Right? Yeah, back in the days, you go out and garden and eat dirt and it wouldn't hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> Just and in many ways, it would help you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the same way. I've got uh, a bunch of grandkids. I have seven that are under six years old. And uh, yeah, springtime, get their shoes off them, get them out, get them out in the yard, get them exposed to things. Yeah. Well, I thought it was interesting during during all the COVID, where one of the main things they talked about was wash your hands. I thought that was common sense, but obviously it's not. Uh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of things that make you scratch your head. <laughs> you know, this all happened. Uh, it was the second week in February when things kind of broke loose and I just blew off all my old textbooks virology immunology and started reading everything I could and ordering more books and by the mid-march I was like okay I can kind of see where what why and how um, it doesn't take rocket scientists to know that this was airborne if it's airborne the size of a virus is one mi mi micron. The blue mass that everybody was wearing, the, the squares were 80 microns, meaning 80 viruses could penetrate between that. And my analogy was, that's like putting up a chain link fence for a high tide, right? So if it's, if, if it's waterborne, then that's something different than a mask at all. But if it's airborne, what are we doing? And in fact, we're making it worse because now you're keeping your water-based bacteria mm -hmm. against your face, mm -hmm. which we've seen that. It's just been an interesting time to be alive in, in many respects. You know? Yes, yes. And, there, and there's many times when I leave here at night and I'm, I'm just scratch, scratching my head. Like, whoa, what a day that was. You know? Uh, between things that, you know, you see in your... In your you hurt for your patients, you know? But as a chiropractor, I'm kind of used to that. As a chiropractor, I'm used to, the first thing they do is call you names. You're a quack. You're uneducated. And then the second thing that they do is they censor you. As a chiropractor, we're not gonna pay for everything that you do. We're gonna give you just this little token for the services that you do. Well, that's the government right now. 
Yes. <laughs> Which is also big media, insurance. Yes, the point I'm making is that we, in my profession, have seen this for 100 years, and the public has just now been exposed to their methodology, mm -hmm. which is, we're going to call you names, and we're going to censor you if you don't do what you're supposed but to. But word of mouth goes a long way, and it experience does. goes a long way, because I does. never believed in chiropractor or anything like that. I just thought, they'll break my bones, I ain't going there. But now I spread the word, you know. Yeah. It helps tremendously. Yeah, I get adjusted three times a week. My wife's a chiropractor. Um, I'm 57, so I've been getting adjusted for 38 years that way. Um, not to say I don't have issues. I've got joint issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I refer to that as from male stupidity. <laughs> you know, men have a tendency to keep doing things that they know is wrong. So do women. Yeah. I can only speak for men. <laughs> I've been married for 35 years. I've learned only to speak my lane. <laughs> I've been married for 58, and I found that I can still speak for him. <laughs> oh. 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 Okay. Next slide. Yeah, you can get back on the set. You guys take notes. <laughs> Oh, I'm coming I'm up on 45 years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, I am. I'm happy. Dude. Somebody remind me I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Egg yolks are bad for you. No. 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 They're false. They're fine. They're false? false. Cholesterol is bad. Yes. Yes. False. Yes. yes. False. Yes. Well, you got too much of it. You need like atherosclerosis yes. and all that stuff. It. Yes, but what's the source of that? What's the, the cause? Food. Inflammation. Inflammation. Oh. Right? Inflammation. Not cholesterol. Inflammation. Where do we get inflammation from? Diet. A lot of it's diet. Yes, sir. A lot of it's diet driven. Because when your body becomes acidic, which is less than 7.0, then that acid drives that inflammation. So if that's all you eat is a bunch of meats, your body's going to be acidic. If you eat dark green leafy vegetables, then that's going to be more alkaline. And that's why you've got to stay on the outside of the store and not dance in the middle. What is your thought on genes and Genetics. people inheriting how that affects things like Awesome. That? I'm glad you brought it up because I don't have a slide on that. So when you look at healthcare, 85% of healthcare is chronic disease. Chronic disease are the choices that each one of us make and it builds up over time. 10% is acute. Car wrecks, stupid men things like football injuries, you know. Falling off ladders. Falling off ladders. Again, stupid men things. Jumping off bars. Oh, you were a part of that, huh? Yeah. Nice. How did that turn out for you? I didn't break anything when I didn't hang, so. <laughs> <laughs> were you escaping something? <laughs> okay. I have a very, uh, she'll tell you, a, a very XG. Jumped out of planes, jumped off bridges. Yeah. Um, so 85% is chronic, 10% is acute, 5% is genetic. 3 to 5%. 3 to 5%. Okay? But there's a. Um, your genes have a, a, a sarcomere out of each side, right? And they're, they have different links. Your lifestyle will turn on and turn off your genetic expression. They call that epigenetics. So three out of the five percent is epigenetics. Yes. Is obesity, can that be genetic? It can have a genetic element, sure can. But I have a sister that's 130 pounds, the same height as me, and I weigh 50 pounds more than her. It sure can. And I have a very good diet. Yes, yes. With women, it, it's a little different. I learned this with that TV show that we did. Men, if you ate what I told you to eat, and when I take you to the gym, if you work hard, men were four to eight pounds a week. I could I know, get they lose it fast. Week in, week out, just like a band. The ladies? Eh. Not so much. So with women, one week you'll lose a lot of weight. The next week you'll lose a lot of inches. In the third week, you won't lose either. Anything, yeah. And then it resets. So that's what I learned from the TV show, too. So, you know, women are not going to be the same as men. 
But you have to think of it this way too. You put the weight on slowly over time. Is it healthy to take the weight off fast? No. no. It took me decades to get this weight. Right. So, you earned it, right? I earned every pound. So, when it, especially with, with ladies, if you can lose about a pound and a half, let's just say two pounds a week. Two pounds. Lot, it is a, a lot, lot for us. It's consistency. It's a lot for me. But it's hard for a woman to do that. It is. It is. But if we can do two pounds a week, consistency over time, patience over time, in six months that's 52 pounds. Wow. Hey, you know they don't put bread in the outside aisle, you know. <laughs> Who can live without bread? I can. One of the questions is on gluten, so we're going to touch on that. Uh, last one. Starving yourself can be effective for weight loss. No, not at all. That ties into where my thought was. You want to lose weight slowly. And the best way to lose weight is to get your body chemistry working correctly. In other words, get healthy on the inside. And we know that from your labs. Right? So when Dr. Holly does labs every three months, we're seeing where you're fluctuating. Because if we can dial in your kitchen and get your labs good, then I know over time with a little bit of exercise, we can get the weight off you. And that's why two pounds a week is wonderful. Because you want to lose it slowly. You want your body to adapt. You, you want your body to adapt to all these changes that, that you're putting it under. And yes, you know, the biggest loser looks great when someone is up there and, you know, 12 pounds this week. What's going through my mind is, holy crap, their body is just, is, is in a war zone. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're giving them good food, but the workouts that they put them through? Mm. I never thought that shit. That, it's extreme. Yeah. Extreme, never, doesn't, extreme doesn't work. Um... We can get you there, but you know, if I put tape over my mouth for six months, I can get there too. <laughs> You're gonna be dead, right? Right? I mean, it's 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 you have you have to say to yourself, you know, you you have to have a why. I want to do this the right way. I want to do it methodically. I want to do it consistent, and I'm going to do this over four months, six months, eight months. One thing I hate to break in. But this morning I had to be at an orthopedic office because of lifting injury I had at the farm. And I haven't been in, in the while as a Watauga orthopedic. And looking around it was so sad. Uh, to begin with that time of day, of course, it's a lot of us older people. Okay. But there was, there was no one with thighs less than that at Sinai. And they were all barely moving. And it just shows that if, if you're in, Feel like going anywhere that direction, it's got to be stopped. And I mentioned it to the fourth paper surgeon, and I said, I, I really, that was an eye opener for me because I, at 150 to 160, I feel like I'm underweight. I wish but I was there. I'm not, I'm not 350, and that, and most people look so unable to move and so sad. Keep in mind, though, this isn't our fault totally. The food in the last 50 years is a different. I don't. I don't even know what 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 it is today. It's food and drugs. Portion sizes. Oh goodness, they're so huge. Well, there there's a lot of things. Your body, if you eat a lot of food, and it's not nutrient dense, your body needs the nutrients. So it's going to say, "Hey, I didn't get enough." You know, there was the uh, documentary about the gentleman that ate McDonald's three three times a day. You know, Troy, you and I were talking about that this morning. How many days did he last? Like 21 or something? Yeah, it was under 30. It was in the low. His liver was shutting down. Dude, what? what happened? Because he, was he, was, he, he did a documentary on his journey of just eating McDonald's three times a day. And he got to about the third week, and his physician told him he had to stop because his liver enzymes were through the roof, his cholesterol was high, everything, all of his labs were really tanking. He was at a critical point. And that's three weeks in. So the answer, yes, we have some accountability for it, but the food that, that we're presented to eat 
in the last 50 years has really been affected. If, if you want to Google something when you get home, Google images of American beaches in 1970. <laughs> well, yeah. And then do it now, so it's 50 years later, and it breaks your heart. There, were, there was no one that was heavy back then. No one. Everybody was thin. There's a lot of things that contribute to it, but even if you eat at home, yeah. depending on what you eat, I mean, you have to you have to be really disciplined. But then, if you're the only guy that eats clean food, you know, it's then you more go. It's prevalent in Tennessee because we we moved here from up north. And Where's up north? Up in New York State. Oh, okay. And, and people here are more close to being not just heavy, obese. <laughs> Different you regions know, are having problems. Like my mom's 81, and sometimes she can work circles around me. Mm -hmm. And I think it has to do because everything she ate in her younger years, you know, was grown the chickens, the hogs, the whatever, you know? And I mean, the older folks are outliving us. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and they work hard. They work hard. They're energetic. I've noticed that. And, and yes. Uh, I don't know if, how much of it's attitude, how much of it is just choice. So the last three years, interesting statistic, the last three years, the life expectancy in America has decreased. It's been the first time. Okay, so that's that's what we're eating. Why would you eat? Yeah. My staff is telling me to get my. I got a question. Not a question. I want to make a comment. You didn't address at all. You did a little bit about drinking it. Another issue that I believe is common with this is water, quality of water we drink. Yes, quality of water is a big thing because, you know, fluoride. Yep. Right? I can remember the, the, the sponges and they would put that gross stuff on them and you had to stick them in your mouth when you were in elementary school for fluoride. Oh, it was nasty. What's interesting is if you go to a dentist now and they're going to treat your teeth with fluoride, they wear a hazmat suit. <laughs> right, it's like, because fluoride in your body is a neurotoxin. It's toxic to your nervous system. So why do we put fluoride in the water? So the pipes don't rust. Teeth don't rot. Oh, no. Pipes don't rust. It has nothing to do with you know, your, your well-being. Just so the pipes don't rust. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee can stunt no. your childhood okay. development. False. False. Cracking what? your knuckles leads to arthritis. False. False. Addiction is a choice. False. Not a choice. Once your brain chemistry gets manipulated, you're you're in trouble. Addiction affects everyone in the same way. False. False. Bottled water is better for you. No. 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 You gotta clean. Energy drinks contain special alertness. Boost. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's where the sugar comes in. <laughs> yeah. A detox is the best way to jumpstart a diet. No. 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 So if you're gonna get healthy, start with what you drink. You have to you have to start with wins, right? You have to build wins. Um, the first thing you do is, is, is you clean up what you drink, clean up your water, get some filtration of some sort, clean up what you're drinking. When you own that, then you start with breakfast, and you clean up your breakfast. Eggs are great, right? Um, vegetables in your eggs. If you're going to use butter, use real butter. Don't use the fake stuff and it's okay to use real butter so you clean up your breakfast and then once you own that then you go to lunch and lunch your salads right lunch should be your biggest meal of the day you should eat so much you're stuffed and then your smallest meal of the day needs to be dinner but you've got to build wins if you try to do the whole thing at once you're gonna crash and burn you set yourself up for failure so you're in this for the long haul not the sprint so start with what you drink, clean it up. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. Um, Granny Smith apples, the green a apples. Dice them up, almond butter. Great snack, okay? So that's how you win this whole diet war. 
you, you steps and you've got to have wins and you win every day and you have to plan your work so on Sundays you've got to plan what you're going to eat and drink for the week and I know that sounds incredibly boring but dying young with disease is even worse than it being incredibly boring fair enough yeah. that's how we approach that eating before bed makes you overweight we talked about that crunches give you a six-pack you can build up the muscle but if you still got a, a tire you'll never see it <laughs> right? right. Yeah. I mean, look at look at power lifters. Incredibly strong people, but they got this layer, this uh, this coat on them, this fat coat. Chocolate is an aphrodisiac. We yeah. laughed about that at lunchtime. Yeah. Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. Starve a fever, feed a cold. No, no. 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 I feel like I'm in everybody's way. Uh, the flu shot gives you the flu. We talked about that kind of stuff. Yeah. What, what's in, what's in the flu shot? It's flu. It's flu. All right. It's flu. Interesting enough. I don't know if I can pull it up quickly or not. Probably not. Um, I spend a lot of time on the CDC website because I think they're a bunch of goofballs. Is it Disney I just think they're a bunch of goofballs. Yeah. You think Dr. Fauci is a goofball? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And I the think, other ones? I think, in my opinion, uh, what's befitting is uh, crimes against humanity. Yeah. So, in 2018, there was 2.9 people died of influenza and pneumonia. In 2020, there was a 98% decline. 98% decline. And mind you, I got this from the CDC. In 2020, there was 2.8 million people died of COVID. Because so, they said that anybody that died, they said was COVID, it wasn't flu. The point is, <laughs> 2.9 people died of the flu and influenza. Two years later, 2.8 people died from COVID. And yet there was 98% reduction. Again, somebody please explain it to me. It looked like they just flipped them. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Sunblock is only needed when the sun is out. No. Sticking to diet and exercise plans requires willpower. Yes. Yes. Plan your work, work your plan. If it's not on paper, if it's not written out, it won't happen. Yes, that's right. Otherwise, you get up in the morning and you're just winging it throughout the day. Woohoo! You know, it's like kind of the Wild West again. Especially if you had part timers. Yes. Yeah. Ten thousand is a magic number. You know what ten thousand means? No. Steps. Steps. Oh, steps. Yes, you're more active. Okay, but if you're eating more bad stuff, you're not gaining anything. Right. If anything, you're going backwards. Right. You cannot consume mud and expect to perform at a high level. It's like uh, um, a, a race car. They don't operate on pump fuel. It's a high octane fuel. Why? Performance. Mm -hmm. So if you want your body to perform at that level, then feed it to perform at that level. That's what we see with my um, pro athletes. You look at somebody like Tom Brady, who's 45 years old and still playing. Because he, he his, his food and what he drinks, clean. incredibly clean. You know, why, why would he want to come back? I don't know, it was about 20 million reasons to come back, you know? <laughs> there you go. He likes that. Yogurt is a health food? Yes. In and of itself? With nothing else? Yes. With, yeah, without anything else. Yes. They put all the yes, sugar in without it. Without the yogurt. stuff. Vegetable chips are basically like eating vegetables? No. That's no. no. uh, You should remove sugar completely from your diet. No. So, if someone is really sick, they need to remove sugar from their diet <clears throat> while we take them through the process of getting their body working right, the correct labs, get the excess weight off, get their body working. Then we can reintroduce that stuff. You can't go from a state of sickness and disease and implement maintenance, right? My patients that come to me for chiropractic, I see them three times a week to start with. And they're like, can I get to once a week? That's the maintenance thing. You gotta address the problem before you get to that, right? Yeah. Gluten is bad. Oh 
Yeah, that's what's in bread. You it's told us not to bonk go in the center of the store, and that's where the bread is. It's preserved. Uh, you should be working out at least an hour a day. This, this was an issue when I was young. <laughs> you should work out at least an hour a day. No. No. Exercise two, maybe three times a week, 12 minutes. Wow. Yeah. So when people tell me, I just don't have time. Oh, you Everybody's got, time. got 12 minutes. <laughs> three times a week. Yeah. So if you're going to start, you start out once a week. Saturday or Sunday. You pick the day. <laughs> right? Yeah. When you get that rolling, then you're going to do it Friday and Sunday. Because most of us kind of check out at 3 o'clock on Friday. Mm -hmm. You've got 12 minutes in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday. So i got two out of the three days. I, I've got you there now. So Monday through Thursday on those busy days, I just need to find another 12 minutes. Weight training makes you bulky and manly. No. No, no. That's why guys take steroids for crying out loud, right? In other words, if you have more muscle, life is easier. You can do more things. You can walk further. The more muscle you have, the better to a point. It helps you with life. You can also burn more calories if you have more muscles, which means I can eat more food. And that's right. If you want to, if you stop weight. Weight training, your muscles turn to fat. No, that's your diet. The only way you're going to gain fat is if your diet goes south. If you exercise, you can eat what you want. No. Oh, same same principle. You know, you can eat a bunch of garbage, but your labs are going to be garbage, right? Antiperspirants cause breast cancer. Ah, that's an interesting one. So with antiperspirants, there's a lot of heavy metals that goes in those. So what's the most common cancer in women? Cancer. Most common cancer in men? Prostate. Prostate. Yes. Your lymphatic system is in your neck, your armpits, and your groin. Mm -hmm. Women is breasts, men is groin. Mm -hmm. You're putting too much garbage in your body, and your body can't get it out. So therefore, it's building up. Make sense? Your body's trying to get rid of the garbage that you're putting in, and it can't do it quick enough. Get rid of the garbage. But what if you can't, you can't get rid of everything and you don't want to walk around stinking? <laughs> There's just deodorant. Just plain old yeah. deodorant. Yeah, yeah. Deodorant. Get the antiperspirants. Yeah, that's something that uh, next time that I see you, I can show you. That's tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of different uh, antiperspirants that, that don't have heavy metals. What about perfumes? Talk with Dr. Cindy about that. Okay. She's up on that stuff. Okay. So that was it. That was it. This is a picture of my staff. Mine is Tracy. We got to update that that picture. It's Dr. Holly. She's the young one. She's in her mid thirties. That's me, Dr. Matt Riggins, Jennifer, my wife, Dr. Cindy, and Sherry up front. I appreciate you all coming out. Uh, we're a primary care physical medicine facility. Dr. Holly does primary care. I do physical medicine, which means I kind of put people back together. Joints, backs, those kind of things. So you have some of our information. If there's a way that we can help you in the, in the future, please let us know.